Guys, guys, guys. So, right, about, what, two months ago or so, I mentioned in a video that right now, at the top of my bucket list of, you know, events this year, is actually the Snapdragon Summit. <sighs> guys, I don't know if it was you, I don't know if it's just coincidence, but we freaking did it. We're in Hawaii, man. I'm gonna say this so many times. We are here in freaking Hawaii. Hawaii, this is nuts. So yeah, Snapdragon actually reached out and invited me to Snapdragon Summit as a Snapdragon insider, which, I think is kind of their fan club. And we're here with other tech creators from around the world who I'm sure you'll all be familiar with. Maybe uh, drop a comment down below this video with any other like familiar faces you see in this video. But I am basically gonna take you with me through the summit, taking you behind the scenes and all the new announcements and show you what it's actually like to be a Snapdragon insider. But I also wanna show you why, like Snapdragon in general and specifically the S24 Ultra for me is a phone that I just, I just keep coming back to every single time, which for a phone that you know, now came out almost a year ago. And we've, you know, we've had the iPhone and the Pixel launches only just recently. The fact I still keep coming back to it is actually pretty impressive. Honestly, the um, timing of this trip could not be of a, like any better time. We're just about to hit 200,000 subscribers on the channel. It could be today, it could be tomorrow, it could be, I don't know, any day now. We're in Hawaii, we're at the Snapdragon Summit. So obviously with all the latest tech that we're um, hoping to cover and catch this week, it's just, yeah, this is this is like an unreal experience. All right, okay, so as part of the whole Snapdragon Insiders thing, uh, you get a case, a bag full of stuff that we're just gonna go into and see what we get. You get the bag itself, obviously a very tiny little uh, kind of sling bag, which is quite nice. Some Snapdragon branded shirts. Uh, this is one of the things, so you'll notice that a lot of the uh, Insiders uh, here within the clips and video clips you're gonna see uh, are wearing these shirts, and this is like the way to identify the Insiders. <laughs> um, ooh, white one as well. Ooh, Snapdragon logo on it, a keychain, Snapdragon Summit keychain. So yeah, little keyboard key, that's pretty cool. My uh, my son's gonna love that. Then we then we have, wow, S24 Ultra. So yeah, um, disclosures are always good, I guess. So disclosures are Snapdragon uh, paid for my flights out here, they're paying for the accommodation, the hotel room. Um, all my food and all that kind of stuff whilst we're here. Um, but they are not sponsoring this video. Um, we have Magback to thank for that, which I'll chat about more about later. It is, yeah, very much titanium black color. Let's do something that we haven't done for a very long time on this channel. If this video gets 7,000 likes, I will give away this S24 Ultra, this black S24 Ultra. I'm probably gonna um, set it up and use it whilst we're here as well. Over on my Instagram page, so if you go to at Pete Matheson on Instagram, uh, make sure you're following me on that platform just to make sure, um, maybe watch the rest of this video first. <laughs> I'll put it in the links down below. Um, head over to Instagram and follow me on there. And if this video, like it says, within the first 30 days, get 7,000 likes. So again, go down below and like the video. Um, I will give away this S24 Ultra to anybody who enters the proper giveaway post over on Instagram. Oh! I won't do it on YouTube because it's full of like spammers and scammers and people will like try and fake you in that I'm, you know, you've won or something in my comments section below. I do try as best as I can to avoid that. Oh, and there is a uh, Snapdragon branded case, S24 Ultra for your phone as well. So that is all you get in the Snapdragon branded insider's bag. This is insane. Thank you so much. Just the weather. It's like, 25 degrees and it's like eight o'clock in the morning. Um, so we are off now uh, to enjoy the first session and see what it's like. And we're gonna get the, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 4 chip or whatever it's gonna be, and maybe some more compute stuff because of all the laptops and you know, the, all, the, all the new AI. So good morning. <laughs> right, so I wanna do this before it gets busy. So we are here as the Snapdragon Insiders, right next to the main stage. Sat on the front row, literally sat on the front row here. Let's call people on that already. And uh, yeah, it's about to be a really busy day by the next things. I'm very excited to introduce the Snapdragon 8 Elite. <laughs> <laughs> Cutting edge model Llama 3.2 to devices that contain Snapdragon platforms. All right, so we've just come out from the first sessions. This is like, uh, what time is it? It's like two o'clock. On the first day, we come out from the sessions, which were pretty long. They were like 
Nine o'clock till, well, like now we've just had our lunch. It's been really interesting. So we've seen the launch of the new Snapdragon 8 Elite chip, which is going to be in all the, you know, all the new flagship Android phones coming out in next year, or a few kind of the end of this year. Um, there's announcements from Honor, um, announcement from Xiaomi. There's some very, very interesting tech coming out soon. Uh, but yeah, Snapdragon 8 Elite chip, 45% uh, performance and power efficiency. Uh, loads of improvements coming to the camera, the autofocus improvements better zoom quality. Uh, really, again, interesting to see how that actually comes through onto the, the actual devices themselves um, and see how well they perform. So there was tons and tons of new announcements about AI. I think we got a whole session on like day three about AI, purely about AI. And there's some interesting stuff coming through. There was tons of demos here where you can, you know, take a photo of something and say, can you just split this between seven people and add a 25% tip? And just, it, it will do things for you. Add a 20% tip to the total bill and split it three ways. To add 20% to the total bill and split it in ways. You would first calculate 20% of the total bill amount. The total bill amount is $52.64. 20% of $52.64 is calculated as follows. 2100 is asked for $52.64. We don't need to listen to the whole thing here, but you get the point. And so I'm going to be interested to see, you know, how like, yeah, uh, no, whether it's Snapdragon AI, but then you've got like Galaxy AI and then Honor AI. And how are these actually going to, you know, take those features and these available features and actually deliver it to like the, the people that use mobile phones? Because at the end of the day, like whilst everyone's talking about like, flops and plops and iops and like how many things and it can process every second like no one really cares about that most people just care about look can i can i use my phone and does it have like useful ai features but realistically it's the we really need an ai app that's kind of circumvents all of that because we want an ai that's going to follow us whichever device we're using it's kind of one of the reasons why i use um a chat gpt a lot at the moment and and the whole open ai thing because i have an app that i can launch on whichever phone or device or laptop I'm using, and it has access to like my data, my previous conversations, and I can ask it those questions regardless of which device I'm using. Whereas if I pick up a, you know, a, a Galaxy phone and talk to Galaxy AI, well, it's not gonna have any of that data that I was using on my iPhone or my Honor phone or, you know, so, so it's that like, that level of awareness that's not just contextual awareness on the device you're using, but contextual awareness for you as a person. You know, the AI needs to know who you are. And I really feel that's like the next level of AI. And I'm not sure we're there yet. I think we're still a, a very, very far, far distance away from having that. Now, these Snapdragon chips are genuinely one of the reasons why I love the S24 Ultra. In the UK, so many Snapdragon devices would then be like repackaged with a, you know, a Samsung Exynos chip instead, like they did this year with the you know, S24 and S24 Plus. But the thing that I have noticed is consistently with basically every Snapdragon device I've ever tested has been like, they've just been great. Performance, the battery life, the efficiency, and that's like everything from, from phones to even my favorite tech product of this entire year, which are the Meta Ray-Bans, which are also, again, powered by Snapdragon. And also, finally, like finally got Meta AI enabled for use in the UK, so they've suddenly gotten even better than they were before. Like Snapdragon have just proven time and time again to me that they have a great chip, so whenever I hear stories like when the latest, you know, Galaxy Tab S10 or even the S25 Ultra might come with the Exynos chip instead, it really, really makes me hesitate. You know, Exynos has historically always been you know, worse than Snapdragon. They're less efficient, less powerful, and just overall, the devices I've used without a Snapdragon chip just haven't performed as well. After some lunch, we headed to check out some demos for mobile and computing and some AR and VR stuff too. And we actually got some hands-on with some new glasses. I think these are the new Snapchat ones. And this is just so cool to see one of my favorite product categories develop, like taking the, the Meta Ray-Ban glasses that genuinely let you use your phone hands-free to send messages and take calls without touching your phone and trying to step further over that line into you know, what the, what the Meta Quest or the Apple Vision Pro can do by projecting a small screen in front of you. Now, I got a chance to run through the first setup steps for these glasses, and it was kind of a cool experience, but the glasses were you know, really quite bulky. The battery didn't last that long because, you know, well, of course, they've tried to jam a ton of tech into a very small space here. And what I could see was, of course, you know, nowhere near like the, the Meta Quest because that's just such a powerful headset and obviously a much more bulkier headset. Now these glasses were more just you know, shapes on the screen that I could then interact with with my hands and fingers. But again, this is just really showing you how that, that things are developing. These products are, are getting better and, and one day, you know, one day we will see a, 
Apple Vision Pro or MetaQuest style experience, but in a yeah, tiny pair of regular glasses. And all of this, all of this is powered by Snapdragon, like particularly with the recent announcements and seeing them really push technology forward, seeing huge jumps of like 40% plus in performance and efficiency. Those are just crazy numbers to see today where we normally get like minor incremental improvements each time. And so I really don't think it would take much for, you know, a Snapdragon chip to be able to power something like a small pair of glasses with a good quality heads up display too. Snapdragon just have such a good chip here. They've got such a good history here as well. Oh, and I also got to try on these VR glasses as well. Now they're, I can't remember the name of the products. I'm so sorry for, for forgetting here, but these glasses were able to use the cameras to look at the environment around you and tell you what you were looking at. Now, I was trying to get it to look at the, the, the table in front of me and tell me who was winning or what the score was. But it, as with you know many things AR related, really wasn't very reliable and didn't work pretty much like 95% of the time I was trying it. But again, like this is like a concept and isn't something you're gonna be able to buy, but it's just letting you see a glimpse into what the you know future of technology will eventually be. And hopefully the AI side of things will actually work and understand and be able to go, you know, see what's going on around you. But this experience was, yeah, interesting, but um, just kind of confirmed my suspicions that we're not there yet, but again, Good to see that we're getting there. And as far as hardware goes, now this carries over to the S24 Ultra. It's just a great all around device. The cameras are good, battery life, speed, general performance browsing around the phone, like everything on this device is so, so good. Whilst also being able to, you know, use all the benefits that Android OS offers. And look, I know people watching this will think that the Pixel is better or perhaps the iPhone or an Honor or a Vivo or whatever it is. And whilst there are some differences between you know, these types of flagship devices, I'm just really trying to show you what each device is capable of without getting too detailed with you know those those spec for spec comparisons. Because you know the truth is, any of the 2024 flagship phones are going to be pretty damn good. Now, I do think that the real up and coming gems we're going to you know, start seeing soon are budget phones that offer many of the flagship features, but for a fraction of this cost. And the problem is though, there are so many of them. So it's really difficult to know which one I should be reviewing, which ones I should check out. Maybe uh, let me know down in the comments if you have any recommendations that I should check out for this channel. So this is the sunset on the end of day one of Snapdragon Summit in Hawaii. And it's been, it's been a day. It's been a very, very long day. It's currently 6 p.m. We've just finished the last session and um, the channel is approaching 200,000. We're not quite there yet, but we are really not that far off, which is just is just insane. And being able to spend it, admittedly, alone. I say alone. I'm not alone, obviously, with lots of tech friends. But, you know, family, kids, missing them a lot when you're on these kind of adventures by yourself and wish they could be here. Good morning. Today, today is day two, and today is all about cars, uh, automotive, and they've got a new series of chips that are, you know, Snapdragon power chips that are, um, interestingly, like powering a whole load of like interesting stuff coming out. The the new stuff they announced this morning was some uh, kind of two new uh, chips, essentially that power like Snapdragon powered cars, and uh, they're working with uh, companies like BMW and Mercedes Benz to then, you know, obviously they're going to put their skin on top of it and turn it into their own like in-car entertainment systems. That's been like a big feature. Also, they kind of teased full self-driving uh, that will, you know, rival that of, of, you know, Tesla and people that are out there doing it already. But I'm super interested to see if they can actually like launch this on other vehicles and you know, who's actually going to get there first. Because I feel like Tesla has, you know, they have the miles in vehicles that are out there collecting all the data, but they seem to uh, currently, as far as, uh, you know, as far as we've seen, fail to actually roll self-driving out for many, many years. Uh, they also teased lots of the so similar kind of features we're starting to see come out. So you get in the car, it knows that you've got a calendar appointment to be somewhere. So it gives you the opportunity to say, oh, hey, I'm just going to navigate you here. And it starts like, directing you to that place. Or maybe it just knows the music you listen to on your Spotify playlist. So it carries on playing from Spotify. Uh, we also saw announcements from, from Rivian uh, and Epic Games. And obviously you talk about Epic Games and you think, oh, we're going to put Fortnite in the cars. But no, they're just looking about how they can use things like Unreal Engine to like do the dashboard animations and make everything look slick. Uh, looks really, really nice. And um, Mercedes-Benz, again, we saw uh, Mercedes-Benz OS, which is MBOS, they're calling it, uh, which is going to be their skin on top of the Snapdragon kind of software that we've got here. And again, it's all going to depend on what uh, each car manufacturer does with the software that's running on top of this, like 
Snapdragon uh, powered chipsets. Now the only hesitation I have, as exciting as all of these announcements sound, is which cars we will actually see that supports this software. Like cars are in a bit of a weird place right now, at least here in the UK. Everyone is developing their own in-car entertainment software, you know, Audi, BMW, Tesla. Uh, we've seen partnerships with Snapdragon for lots of this, but none of them seem to want to offer, you know, deeper Apple or Android experiences right now in terms of the cars we're actually buying. Even though we have seen partnerships with, you know, BMW and Mercedes-Benz, there are still like they're, they're still reserved for only the very, very high spec, top level for like flagship models, which doesn't really yet flow down into the the smaller, lower, um, not even budget models, just you know, just the mid level uh, models that are the most the most popular models, I would say. So yeah, I think for me, like twenty twenty five is going to be a very very interesting year for um, for cars and automotive because we're going to start seeing lots of these chips work their way into you know the cars. Hopefully, the cars that we're actually you know generally going to buy every single day, like the most popular models uh, that's going on. So this might be a good place to tell you about the third reason that actually keeps me coming back to the S24 Ultra specifically. And however strange it may sound, it's actually the ecosystem that Samsung are building out. Now it's still an open ecosystem because of, you know, Android being the underlying platform, but grab a, a Samsung ring and a watch and those devices combined will give you like battery savings rather than you just doubling up data because you're recording, you know, heart data from both your watch and your ring at the same time. And then extensions into you know, smart things for things like washing machines, dryers, air conditioning. I actually have a routine on my phone for when I go to bed and then I charge my device. And that then switches on the AC in my bedroom, uh, sets the temperature, and then switches it off again when I take it off charge in the morning. Now others have similar things between you know Apple and Pixels, but I've not yet seen this like deeper level of automation available with another device. Like unless you really get deep into something like Home Assistant, which is, is great, but also super complicated for most people. And also because Apple just doesn't make half of these devices. I'm sure if there was a you know Apple air conditioning unit, then that would work great. But for now, at least they don't. And even the new Mata standards are still fairly slow to apply to a lot of new kind of product categories. Now, Samsung actually announced an integration with Tesla early this year. I'm not actually sure when that's actually coming out. That will let your Tesla Powerwall talk to smart things. So when there's a power cut, it will automatically switch all your devices, TV, washing, you know, fridge, AC, all of those devices over to economy mode just to save the battery whilst you, you, know, you have no power in the house. It's kind of those integrations which are really cool, really practical, and those are things that I actually use almost every single day. Speaking of something I use every day, you know, it takes some balls to make any Android video in October, November, because no brands care about Android in that time. Like literally all they care about is sponsoring Apple content. So I just wanna personally thank and say a huge shout out to Magback for sponsoring this video. Now, not only have they sponsored this video, but we have worked together on a number of videos now, and it is so easy to recommend them when I literally use their products every single day. I'm still using their case for my S24 Ultra, but I've also been using the new Elite case for a couple of months now, which after a lot of asking, is finally coming to the S24 Ultra. So you get all of the basics that a case should have with you know good protection, raised edges around the screen and the cameras, all of the good stuff. Now Magback's unique thing is being able to stick their case to any metal surface because of some like additional super strong magnets. And no, they don't interfere with the S Pen or anything like that. I've been wearing mine on my S24 Ultra for you know best part of a year now. No issues whatsoever. Now the new Elite case also adds a finger loop. You've got a magnetic kickstand, an included screen protector, and you have these customizable colors that you can swap around as much as you please. It is just now my favorite case I use on any device they sell them for. And you can pick one up with a discount and use the link down below. But please do check them out if only to support them for being, you know, one of like literally zero brands who are willing to give me a chance with sponsoring some, you know, Android content in the middle of Apple season. So yeah, link down below. And once again, huge thank you to Magback. Thanks guys. Right, we have just wrapped, uh, kind of wrapped uh, day two on Snapdragon Summit. We've had a whole day of cars and automotive and new chips. And um, we're just here at the very end. I say the very end. We've got a whole like evening to do here. So the end of a, a really, really nice day. What a what a location to have in Hawaii. Uh, yeah, that's for some meals and drinks and, uh, and things. Yeah, bye-bye. Welcome to day three, Snapdragon Summit. Day three is kind of like a, a half day. There's one session this morning, which is like an hour long on AI. I'm not sure if that's gonna be a deep dive or like a high level thing. So I'm gonna go to that one in a minute.
Other studies indicate that if you surround AI inference solely in the cloud, about 3.5% of the world's electricity generation can be consumed just by AI alone. That's quite something. So with the AI talks done on day three, we actually had a bit of time in the afternoon to go on this excursion put on by the uh, Snapdragon team. And it was to go snorkeling in the seas, in the waters at, uh, of Hawaii. And it was just such an incredible experience. Um, I've shot a load of clips on the S24 Ultra, as you'll be able to see here right now. But we uh, were given all the, the snorkeling gear. We jumped in. Uh, I tried to capture as many clips as I could on the S24 Ultra. Um, they actually gave us some waterproof cases to use and, and shoot underwater, but it, I really just couldn't get great pictures. So I actually ended up taking my Insta360 uh, X3. I think it's 360 camera with me. Got a few shots with that, although I think water still kind of got into the um, casing or housing of the X3 somehow because it only really lasted for about half an hour and then it stopped working for the rest of the trip. So there's that. <laughs> um, but after about kind of 30 minutes or an hour of snorkeling or so, we jumped back on the boat and had just an incredible spread of food. There was just an unlimited amount of food. <laughs> it was just so, so nice, as you'll be able to see here in the clips, was just a massive spread put on. Uh, there was some delicious drinks, some even more delicious cookies, and it just gave us all the, the whole Snapdragon kind of insiders team that were on the boats and the, the Snapdragon team themselves and the Qualcomm team that were on there as well. It was just like a such a pleasant experience. I know I've said this loads of times about this trip. This whole trip's been a really pleasant experience, but it just... It really makes you grateful for this kind of you know, job that we're doing here and um, creating content and everything. But anyway, for now, I'm going to enjoy the rest of the time on the boats. Also, just to, I guess, maybe even point out the obvious here, but you know, all of us here, all of us like tech YouTube creators um, on this boat, enjoying ourselves and snorkeling and food and friends and fun and all this kind of stuff was just like the, the perfect environment to capture all of this. And obviously we all had S24 Ultras with us. So we're all shooting clips on our S24 Ultra, loads of people taking photos, taking videos. And so, you know, this is fun. I won't lie. This is like incredible fun, but it's also a great opportunity to really just try and show how capable of the S24 Ultra and just the, you know, Snapdragon chip is in these phones, being able to take these underwater photos and videos, being able to capture these um, you know, photos from these beautiful backdrops behind us. Um, to the beautiful like mountains and clouds and like even the, like, the rain clouds as we were um, going back into to, you know to dock I guess you call it it's a great opportunity and it just allowed us you know when we're in the UK it's very grey it's raining it's dark at like 4 p.m. by now and so being in these locations just gives us that opportunity to capture beautiful like stunning locations stunning stunning scenery. Uh, meet great people and test out all these different modes, the portrait modes, the, you know, five times zoom and all these kind of things. And again, it's just, you know, coming back to the S24 Ultra, it is such, such a capable camera. And then this evening we get to have a traditional luau, which is something I've never experienced. And yeah, just, just wait, this is going to be so cool. So as we come to the end of day three, it is time for a traditional luau, which I've never experienced before, <laughs> um, but it was great. Um, as you can see, there's just a ton of people here. These are all the people for the entire Snapdragon Summit events. There are, you know, dancers and music and food and drinks and the, the, the torches were lit all over the place. It was just such a beautiful setting. And then the sunset just just absolutely beautifully set in the background, so much so that I just I had to go down. Uh, I took a friend with me. Uh, thank you so, so much for coming down with me and helping me kind of set this up and making sure the camera didn't uh, get washed away. Guys, this is, uh, this is really kind of crazy. We are in Hawaii. Sunsetting, day three. You know, YouTube is such a weird like line of work to get into. We sometimes get flown to these like crazy, crazy locations and events and like hang out with some of the biggest, like biggest tech races on the planet. I was actually in um, Italy recently, stood next to like the biggest tech creator in India, like huge tech creator in India. And I didn't have a clue like who he was. Like literally he was like, he looked familiar, but yeah, this is, this YouTube thing is a really, really strange thing to do and just celebrating 200,000 in Hawaii. 
it's kind of bittersweet. Like YouTube is quite a lonely thing, right? You make videos by yourself, you upload them into like the ether that is the, the black hole of YouTube, and then you just, you wait, and then you hope, and you try and get some views, and you know, from total strangers who will never, never meet. This tide is definitely coming in. Uh, <laughs> um, and we've got to the stage now where there's like a small team of us making these videos who also aren't here as well. So I just, I can't wait to go home and celebrate this with, you know, the people that, that really matter and you know, the people we're, we're doing this for. Like kids, wife, family. 200,000, 200,000 people. I would say that I'm fortunate enough to be where I am, but um, it's been bloody, bloody hard work. Like being here in Hawaii, at the Snapdragon Summit with 200,000 of you. Whilst also working with a crazy good brand like Magback, again, huge thank you for that, who actually paid me to make a video whilst I'm out here. This is, this is wild, man. It feels really odd though, like 200,000 feels like it means less and less nowadays. Like, you know, this YouTube game feels rigged a lot of the time. Like these guys bragging about reaching 100,000 subscribers after years of hard work and by hard work they mean you know buying subscribers and buying views and paying youtube so that you can like grow your channel to 100,000 in like a matter of days like enough to con brands into like doing brand deals and this whole thing but so it then feels like when i do hit these you know milestones of like 100k 200k they're not really worth as much anymore but at the same time it's huge like it's taken me four years like four years to grow this channel to what it is like four years of feeling like i have like no idea what i'm doing like uploading videos that nobody wants to watch and over time just like learning to improve learning how to make videos that i just i hope people will watch and i think i think i hope i think we're getting better at it and i feel like you know we've now got our own style and i just i hope you've noticed that if you've been following along this year this this fourth year of making YouTube videos, and it's really been the first year where I've actually been proud of the videos we're now making. Man, that sunset is just beautiful. Now, I, I used to upload a video and then almost hide away from the comments section just because I didn't really, I wasn't proud of the videos. I didn't really care about what people were saying. And you know, all the comments were like, you idiots, Apple's better than that, or Samsung's better than that, or ah, Samsung sponsored you. And for these recent videos, like these recent videos, we have worked so hard to you know, try and make them what they are. My kind of my kind of secret goal right now is to try and make somebody cry by watching one of my videos just with the the whole like emotion thing we're we're going for with uh, the footage we're using, the music we're using. So yeah, I am really enjoying creating these videos right now. Like bringing in music, mixing it in with some emotion, showing you what owning like each device is actually really like in like the the real real world and not the like tech YouTube bubble that, you know, we all we all kind of see on YouTube and Twitter and all that kind of thing. It's just things that get blown up over the silliest things. Anyway, these are my thoughts. And yeah, I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone who has been watching, liking, commenting, engaging with my videos. Uh, we're really trying to push forward here with making some better content each time. And I'm going to enjoy the last few hours in Hawaii, watching the sunset in Maui and just Looking forward to going home and seeing the people that, you know, we're doing all of this for that really, really matter to me. So with that said, thank you and good night. It's been a long day without you, my friend. And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. We've come a long way from where we began. Oh, I'll tell you all about it when I see